So this is the manky bit. We're pulling the skins out for the first time and all the hairs are slipping off. I believe this one's a fallow. And if we just throw them down there, what we can do, we can begin to get an understanding of which particular skin we want to work on. It's all a bit smelly, but that's what we're going to be combating. This is going to begin as a relatively unpleasant experience, and as the week unfolds, it's going to become much more enjoyable. So I've pretty much cleaned up all of the connective tissue and lumps of fat and meat off that side. So it's time to turn it over. And well, we can see just by doing the other side first that this is going to, the hair is just going to slip off the top of here. And we've got two layers that we're interested in getting to. We're interested in getting to the epidermis, which is the bit which is closest to the hair. And we're also interested in looking at what happens with the grain. So if you come and have a look closely at this, you can see just at the top here, you can see this little brown area. That's your epidermis. But what we're after really is we're after something that's going to look like you're feeling Now, what I'm doing is I'm hunting the grain down. When you take the grain, that's the journey that, which separates this from being leather to buckskin, okay? And um, as we keep going, what we're going to be asking ourselves is, have we got to the bottom of that? Well, when we re-soak it, what will happen is any particles of grain that are still left there will swell up and we can go back and hunt them down. And if right at the end of the process we detect any more, we can abrade them off. So it's quite a big journey, delicately removing ourselves down to the bottom layer of the fibrous deer skin that we're looking for. Mm. It's cleaned on the inside and um, cleaned on the outside and all the grain is scraped off so it's now going for its first descent into the brain. It's all mished up, a little bit of water added. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep moving that through and involving that and start inviting that brain to actually get right into the particles of the skin and open up the collagen fibres and drive it right in there. And then what we'll do is we'll squeeze it all out again. So this is day two of my hide tanning workshop, buckskin making, and we've got to wring out the brain from these skins. So this is the way we do it. What we do is we get it over a post like so, Try and organise its shape a little bit. And then we're going to begin to roll it in like a kind of an inner, inner tube thing from both ends. It's a battle of the flies at the moment. Um, that's one of, the, one of the things that can make this job super unpleasant is just a conglomeration of flies and brain. So we covered it over to make the best of it last night. So I've had 24 hours sitting in the brain and now we're going to begin to spin this up. It's probably going to slip away to start off with, but we'll get some form of reduction going on. And we're going to keep doing this until we literally can't get a single drop 
out of it. Then it's going back in the brain again, and we're going to keep doing this. We're going to do it three times. So half our day is going to be ringing and draining. You see how that's all come away? That's typical of the first time you do it. But as you keep doing it, what happens is the structures in the hide begin to change and it becomes more and more, it behaves better and better, almost like it knows what you're doing to it. It's slightly smelly, but not too bad. And the smaller loop you make, the more control you'll have over wringing it out. So you mustn't have it hanging too low, otherwise it just slips out. So this is Rhonda, she's on my course. Hi. Enjoying yourself Rhonda? Yes, thanks. Coping? Just about. And um, what you need to keep in your mind Rhonda, not only are you driving that out, you're also driving it in. You're getting it right into the collagen fibres. And you'll be pleased to know that I want every single last drop out of that. <laughs> and just when you thought you've worked hard enough, <laughs> you're going to put it back in the brain, you're going to do it all over again. <laughs> right, guys, come on, let's see you getting them fibres open. This is where I smack myself in the face. Pull! <laughs> come on, pull! <laughs> open it up. You stuck them together now, you've got to pull them apart. Good job. You Gosh, see it going? Yes. Yeah. I won that one. Nice one. Well done. <laughs> so now we're in the territory of stretching and drying. And we're really putting lots of pressure on this and opening all the fibres up. And uh, as long as we can't see through it, that means we haven't got any rawhide in it and we're on the journey home. So literally after about eight hours of re-soaking this in the brain and then pulling it, we've got a soft, noiseless, tactile cloth. The only problem with this as it is, if it gets wet, it's going to go hard again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it off into the forest where we're making a smokery and um, we're going to smoke them overnight. We're currently turning my outdoor woodland campsite into a smokery. It's uh, setting this up. It's a small figure of eight. Stop it coming under. And then to actually smoke the skins, we don't want regular wood. What we want is we want punky wood. So this material here is coming apart it easy, is it? Easy enough. Yeah. And that will give us really rich smoke. Which also is what I mean when I talk about putting history into the skins. The elements that are going to come back off of that in terms of the smoke. That's a lot of history going through these hides. And um, it should yield quite a good colour, but it remains to be seen. So we have some pretty smiley faces because um, we're 90% of the way there guys and what we've got to do I'm afraid is there's a few noisy little bits, one or two little bits of rawhide still in there so we're going to give them their final descent but this time just into plain water we're going to um, soften out them noisy little bits of uh, rawhide and then we'll push them on into soft lush buckskin. So the hard work has been done and what it's yielded is soft, fibrous, beautiful buckskin. And then the difficult part of the journey begins. The decision to start cutting it. So Rhonda, you're going through the brave corridor right now. Mm -hmm. You have scissors 
and all your hard work <laughs> and you're creating a product. I am. Hopefully a bag. Takes some nerves, doesn't it? It was, yeah, three days of really hard work to take scissors was quite a step. <laughs> Well, that is just my little coffee holder by the looks of it. I'm well happy with that. That was a complete fluke, the fact that it's the exact size. <laughs> and it fits onto my belt. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's... Buckskin coffee holder. Oh. <laughs> so look at this, three days of hard work. And the result is, <laughs> you can see it in their faces, look. Well chuffed. Buckskin. How's it been, guys? Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, you learned a lot, haven't you? Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for coming and enjoying this course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.